Welcome back to the Diamond Matter channel. This is Polishing Platinum Part 2. I'm going to show you the very final stage of preparing your metal and then I'm going to physically polish it and show you what's involved. Uh, platinum is so hard wearing, you literally need to polish individual parts before you assemble it. Because if you start trying to polish very difficult to reach areas when it's all put together, it's just not going to work. You're going to be spending all day with bits of string trying to get it all polished out and you'll never do it as good as if you can just get easy access to, to certain bits. So I'm using my paper discs again. Let me show you a close up of what I've done. I took a normal paper disc. Then I took some 1500 grey paper or 1600, 1200, whatever, to something, one of the really smooth grades. I super glued it on like that, rubbed it around a bit, just made sure that there's glue entirely over the disc. Let that dry and then I cut it out with a pair of scissors. Then I fitted it into my little mandrel thing, whatever it's called. So this is now literally this paper disc so I could really use this to get my metal like really as good as it can be before polishing. If you don't know polishing sucks. It's dirty, it's messy, you're gonna be breathing in bits of fluff, it's gonna go all up your arms and stuff and you've got to scrub your fingers after to get the polish off. It's, uh, it's not enjoyable so the more work you do at the bench now uh, the less time you got to do the polish and you'll do a better job as well. So I don't know if you can see the finish on that. I'm just going to buff it a bit with this 1500 grey paper. I don't know if you can see it's coming up a bit brighter. See that? This is, this is me uh, still on the, the buffing stage, the papering stage. This disc will get it even brighter than that using your, that same paper on your buff stick. Uh, I've also polished in there as well because that'll be impossible to get to once my top goes on. So again, I mentioned it in the other video, this goes back to making things a little bit heavier than you think you might need because it gives you space to really buff things back. And aim to have all your corners as sharp as possible. They, they, will, they will round off when you're polishing. It's nice to have a finished piece of jewellery that's really just sharp and really crisp. Okay, so that's ready for polish. I'll show you the disc on that. And there's this bit from the other video. This should brighten up a little bit. And the less polishing I've got, I've got to do with the mops, less likely I'm going to get little drag marks, which are like little pits that come off the edges of metal. Like if I'm, the mop is soft, and if you're pushing it really hard into it, which you need to when you're polishing platinum, it can sort of dig out little holes. So it's get little scoops coming off of the, off of any little holes or little edges, which is uh, basically bullsing up your piece of jewellery. You need to not have those. Okay, disc, no good really for doing the edge. You, you can do it, but it's more tricky to be accurate. So for that, going to my paper whizzer thing. Actually, I'm gonna make sure it's, it's properly smooth with this one first. Go around it. I'm not gonna worry about the top too much. That's all gonna be cut up by the setter. I just get it flat, but I don't worry about the actual polished finish of it because they're going to be. Oh, don't do that. They're going to be cutting it up with the uh, grave and stuff. So there's no, no point in getting it polished. Hello. Okay. Now, take it a little stage further. I'm 
hopefully that's showing up on camera. I know it's not hugely close, but it's making a difference. Okay, oh, let's do that claw. If I can do a claw for this. Yes, you've got to go around all the claws as well. You can't miss that, like even that inner edge. When it's set, you can you can see little bits of the claw, so all got to be polished entirely. And then try not to throw it on the floor. Just skim it, just touch it up and down the claw with a, this is flat, but you can get away with it, just really gentle. Just scoop it up. And then obviously the polishing, we do those with the bristle brushes. They do quite a lot of work with it as well. This is what all, get your jewelry different to other people's handmade jewelry. It's the attention to detail, not really putting the work in to get, get all the difficult to reach bits polished. Okay, so I've got flats on this V-claw, so I'm gonna, this is the ideal tool for doing this. I'm gonna take this edge off. You'll be careful that edge, I don't want that cutting into the top of my, um, collet. See, I'm just gonna sharpen it like a blade. There you go. So now I can sort of safely touch that and it's just paper on the edge, it's not any kind of grit from that top disc. Also, if you're sending your pieces, handmade pieces to a setter that you don't know or haven't given them much work or anything similar before. When you give it to them really beautifully finished, ready for setting, it's more likely they're gonna be, take much more care with it. If it's just badly made, badly polished, they're gonna think nothing of just really ramming the stones in any old way. <laughs> okay, that's ready. Right, disc, it's on there. Let's do this. stage of detailing we're going down to the pendant motor for the mini bristle brushes to really get into those little nooks and crannies by the way not ideal to be polishing at your bench because this polish is not a good thing to have around your solder that's it <laughs> you get dirt, dirt on grease on your solder it doesn't flow very nicely so these bristle brushes, I call them, I don't know what the proper name is. I think they're just called pendant bristles. I don't know. I call them chimney sweeps. They remind me of a little chimney sweep brush. Uh, they come in the softer bristles in the whites. I've got, this is a kind of, kind of like that felt disc, but it's more separated. Like mini versions of the standard mops. i uh, got a wire brush, literally never used that. I don't know why I keep it. Same with that one, a wire version of that. I sort of, it's going to be handy one day, but I don't know when. Uh, even when they're worn out, um, they're still kind of useful. Like they, they go kind of sharp. And that's it. Oh yeah, these little uh, pendant ones as well. They're just little pencil brushes. Just they're good for stabbing into into the ends of things. So I have loads of those. I even cut the bristles down to make them hard from from new. So they're a bit long. The ones I buy, they're a bit too long. For now, we are just using the black and the white chimney sweepers, and it's very handy to have just a little piece of polish with your pendant things. It saves you having to grab that, like a giant chunk of it, just to dab on there. A little bit on here. 
usually I'd wear a, like a just a simple kind of face mask just because a lot of dust goes in your face but I'm not going to because I need to be able to speak. So this is for the claws. I've already been over it with that disc and the, the bigger similar bristle brush on the polishing motor. So what I do is start at the bottom, sort of going up and down it and moving around. And then use, use loads of this. First I go to all the easy to reach bits. Just work my way around the claw. Yep, got dust going in my face quite a lot. Lovely. Just making sure I get, oh, I can't hold on to it, okay. Making sure I get right down to the bottom. Also, this uh, flat section here, making sure that's polished before setting because the stone's gonna go in there, but there's gonna be stones either side of it around the edge, but that edge is gonna be visible. So I'm gonna make sure that's polished nicely as well before it gets set. Again, it's these little uh, attention to details and extra effort. That's what makes a nice piece of jewelry. So it's doing that inner edge now. Okay, I think that's enough. Again, I, I'm probably making this look like it's quite quick and easy, but it's only quick and easy because I went to great lengths to make sure it was buffed back as much as possibly, as much as possible with all this, all these tricks with the fine paper. You really got to go to the finest grades of paper to get good polish on platinum. Okay, I'll uh, just move on to the white one, which I don't think is too necessary before before setting. This might polish it up quite a lot. This gets it to a certain level, and then oh, it's a, it's a new bristle brush, even worse. There's more bits going in my face. Oh yeah. Really taste that today. So this is polishing it, but quite a poor polish because it's quite. If you loop it with a ten times loop, it's quite liney. It's bright, but it's not what I would call polished. It's a long way off being mirror finished. Ooh, no, I missed a bit. I forgot about doing that inside edge, like all around inside. That's all got to be polished. So to do that. I've got this string. This is actually jeweler's polishing string, but I don't think you need to buy special specific stuff. It's just it's just thin string. <laughs> That'll do. As long as it's not nylon-y and get proper string, which is made of string, you'll be fine. So I've lost my bit of grease there it is. Rub that up and down on there. This does wear out quite quick, so I might be changing it soon. Just cut the ends off nice and neat. That's not gonna cut. No, I'm gonna say so just thread that through there. If you, just one little trick, if you've got a really tiny hole you need to uh, string out and you can't get that end through the hole, what I do is I, I lick it and it sharpens it up and then you've got more chance of getting it through a small hole. But uh, yeah, now there's grease on there. I literally just I rub the piece backwards or forwards on it and making sure as I'm going backwards and forwards, I'm rotating like that. So you're not just digging down in one area, you've got to keep it moving across and then turn angles, push up the other side, and then turn it over completely, going down the other way, just going over every little surface that I can. So anyway, I won't show you the whole process of that. And then I've got another one next to it. I've just got to nail a screw in the wood, and I just tie the, tie the string to it. This one is just for green. Green on that. Again, let's go over it, exactly the same technique. And then when it's all buffed out, it should start to get a decent shine on it. 
So now we're back on this bad boy and the technique is like we used the disc on this so it's kind of got a all over polish in all kind of directions but this one what I'm doing is as I feed it onto the mop I rotate it down so this is kind of going along along the metal so I just sort of rotate it like that rotate it like that and then again always bearing in mind any little sharp corners like you don't want to be rounding off anything loads of grease not too much there's no point in having melted bits flying everywhere I'm just wasting it Next one, same. I'm going to be more careful with this because I'm nervous of uh, any kind of drag lines coming off the holes on the back. So very light. And also things, when you've claws sticking up, they're very catchy on mops. So you've got to hold on really tight. Pushing it quite gently, only at a small section at a time. Uh, I think I'll do the edge when it's on there as a complete ring. Okay, next stage. That was a good 10 minutes just using the mop just to get these sides or the scratches out. I keep a 10 times loop near my polishing motor so I can really cl have a close look at what's going on. So now when I go to the next stage, uh, I shouldn't have any sort of nasty surprises, any little lines or any little dips or anything I didn't know about. So it should be plain sailing. So we're getting on to the softer mop now with the green. Where is that? There it is. So this is just a little stitched one with the, um, the softer. I don't, I don't necessarily recommend these small ones, by the way. It's just because this polishing motor is so small, that's why I've got to use them. The bigger ones are actually better. Green. Now, you see that shine? It should come up a lot brighter now. Same technique, moving it around. So next stage, I've got this even softer, more fluffy mop, and I used this yellow platinum polish on that. It's more hard wearing, it's quite gr gritty. I don't know what's different about it. It's very hard compared to the, the grease. Um, yeah, this really gets a good shine on the metal. That's after a very light bit of that yellow polish. It really brings it up. That was the green side. I don't know if you can, if you're gonna see any difference on camera. This is the yellow side. Holding it and looking out in my eyes, there's a definite finish. It's got a much more glassy kind of mirror. Very, really shows off that bright white, lovely shine that you get on polish. Uh, sorry, platinum. So, so along with part one and part two, I hope you've learned a little bit about finishing off platinum. It basically just takes loads of buffing, loads of buffing. Have your 10 times loop nearby so you can keep checking what's going on with it. Because you will see stuff when you, like even happened to me, even, even though I know it's not gonna be enough, you look at it and you're surprised at how much more buffing you need to do. So I think uh, you need to definitely make yourself. I've got three grades of buffs, there are actually four, but these are the main three. A really coarse, which is kind of silly, it's so coarse, it's almost like a file. Um, this medium, like what I call medium, what was it, 600 grade or... Between 240 and 600 is a good one to have. And then this one, which is like 1000 plus, 1200, 1500, like really 
sometimes it gets it gets squeaky. It's just kind of metal builds up on the paper, and it, you're just squeaking metal against metal. But it's beautiful because it's really putting a, a shine again, and really perfectly flat, which is ideal for then going on to the plat uh, polishing stage on platinum because it means you've got less work to do on the polishing motor. You can finish things much quicker, and it'll just be neater. All your edges and corners will be nice and sharp, and you just have a nicer, higher quality piece. But yes, you did spend a lot of time preparing it for polishing. Um, but that's just the nature of platinum. It, you are with, with all your work, you are rewarded with a really nice white shiny beautiful piece of jewellery which 18 karat white gold could only dream of being.